Because we out here to wake up our people. Right. What's your nationality? Uh, Caribbean. Caribbean. Caribbean what? Like, there's a whole bunch of islands. Where you from? Barbados. Okay. You see yourself on that side? Huh? You don't see yourself on that side? I wonder if it was like a... So you said you're Caribbean, and the Caribbean is located where? So-called located where? Come on, read it. Say it out loud so we can hear you. Judah and Levi. Levi would be the so-called Haitians, and Judah is the so-called African Americans. But you said that you're from the Caribbean, correct? You see, the Caribbean is located where? In the West Indies, or the so-called West Indian. So according to that, you will be a so-called, so-called West Indian, correct? So what is, what is God called a so-called West Indian? That's your tribe. Where's your problem from? Right. Now, Chris, have you ever heard this before? Uh, yeah, kind of. Where'd you hear that? Uh, I think my sister told me that. Your sister told you? Okay, they're from? Uh, like, like West Indians were, were the ones that, like, originated, like, kind of, like, Yeah, but you're not a so-called West Indian. Western is the, the location where you are. Indian come from the word Indios, which means servant or slave. So what they're really calling you was a Western slave. You get it? So we're here to wake up our people to show them who they are according to the scripture. Because unbeknownst to you, Chris, the Bible is was only meant for you, to you, by you. You ever hear of FUBU? Yeah, the FUBU clothes. Do you know what FUBU stands for? First of all, who created FUBU? Do you know? It was a black man. And he called it FUBU. Why? Because it means for us, by us. This Bible is the ultimate FUBU. That's right. You understand what I'm trying to say? This Bible is the ultimate FUBU. This Bible is for us, by us, given to us by our God, who is the God of Israel. Chris, today you're going to learn that you're an Israelite. Now, back to that scripture that the officer pulled out for you. This scripture applies to you. You just have to now put your mind into it to see where it applies to you. Watch this. Read it again. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 10 and verse 4. Wherefore Hanun took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards. Hanun was a man who did the servants of King. You ever heard of King David? They said they did his servants wickedly. Let's see how they did his servants foul. And today we say, yo, you treated me foul. You did me wrong, brother. How did they do say David's servants wrong? How did they treat David's servants foul? It's about to show us. Check it out. And cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks. So they cut off the garments, even to the middle, even to the buttocks. Right? Your pants are hanging off your behind. You understand? You're doing it because everyone else does it. It's okay. But what I'm trying to show you is at that time, and in that era, it shows you how far we fell from grace. Because the same people that this Bible was being told, remember FUBU, for us, by us, this is you in that Bible. This is your ancestors in that Bible. This is about your people. You understand what I'm saying? At that time, it was a shame for us to see our butts hanging out of our pants. You understand? But nowadays, it's the norm. It's okay. So what happens is the rest of the nations, they walk upon us and look at us in an astonishment. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. Because everything that we're going to teach, what's up, my brother? How you doing? Oh, how you doing? How you doing, my brother? Good, good. We out here teaching the blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, who they are according to the Bible. Yes. This is my brother, Chris. And we're trying to show Chris right now. Listen to the scripture. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 47. Uh -huh. Because thou serves not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart yep. for the abundance of all things. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies 
With the Lord shall sin against thee. Says who shall sin against us? With the Lord shall sin against thee. Uh huh. In hunger. In hunger. Stop for a second. This is going into the curses and the blessings of Israel. Israel today, Chris, what's your name? Todd. Todd and Chris. Israel today are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. God told us that we had a certain criteria to follow. That if we followed what he asked us to do by keeping his laws, his statutes and commandments, then we would be on top above all nations of the earth. But if we chose not to obey his commandments, then also other curses will come upon us which are the opposite we will be on the bottom of society and um we're on the bottom of society right now that's right we are the heel and uh, we, we're the gum that's stuck to the bottom of the shoe of the so-called american today whether you are in k Verde, whether you are in the bahamas no matter where you are in the slums of, of Liberia and Africa, because our people were scattered there also, which that shows at the bottom of the sign. You understand? No matter where we are in, in the world, we are the gum that's stuck on to the bottom of the shoe of our oppressors. Okay? So what the Bible was showing us is that we have enemies that are sent against us. But here we are today in America, we want to hang on to the so-called white man. We want to hang on to the so-called nations and say they are our friends. You might have an individual friend from that nation, but guess what? As a whole, they're not your friends. The Bible says they are your enemies. Let's prove it. Read it from the top. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Uh huh. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger. So when you're hungry, you got to serve your enemies. How? Do you owe Walmart to buy food? Do you own the McDonald's to buy food? Do you own Golden Crust when you're hungry? Do you own Stop and Shop when you want to go buy food? Who owns those things? Chris, who owns those places? Don't be scared to say it. Who owns those places? White people. Ta Excuse me, sister. What was that? The white people. The white man. He owns. So guess what? According to God, when you're hungry, you got to serve your enemy. Your enemy is the so-called white man. Read on. And it, Don't go nowhere, sister. Read on. And it thirst. So when you're thirsty and you want water, you got to serve your enemy. Who do you got to go to to get water? If you don't pay your water bill, what happens to your water? Aquafina. Poland Springs. They shut it off. Guess what? It's even illegal to collect rainwater here in Massachusetts. You got to go to your enemy to get those necessities. Read on. And in nakedness. And in clothing. When you want clothing, that nice Michael Jordan t-shirt that you got on. Your do not disturb t-shirt. The jeans that are slightly hanging off your behind. Pull your pants up, young man. You understand what I'm saying? Who do you go to? You got to go to who? Your enemy to get those things. This is what the Bible's proven. Read on. And in want of all things. No matter what you want, you got to go to them. If you want to leave the country, sister, right? And go over to the Bahamas, my brother. You got to get a passport. Where you get the passport from? Your enemy. When you die, and your family got to take on the, 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 the burden of you passing away, it's not an easy thing, because why? There's a bill that's acquired with that. You know how much it costs to go to a funeral? You know how much it costs to, to pay to get a, 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 a burial plot? You got to go to your enemy to even do that. And you have to serve them to do that. How do you serve them? When you're busting your behind and you're working. Let's think of the average black male, right? These are the curses that God is talking about. Here's another one. Go to Isaiah 65, 28, 65. No, excuse me, Deuteronomy 28, 65. I apologize. Listen to this. My sister over there, I'm going to tie you into this because it seems like you got a little bit of understanding. Listen to what's coming out. Check this out. Listen. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 65. Uh-huh. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. Stop. No matter what nation that we're in, whether it's Puerto Rico, whether it's Cape Verde, whether it's these uh, certain African nations we live in, whether it's the Bahamas, 
whether it's Barbados, we have no rest in the places that the Most High God allow us to go to in captivity. We have no rest. We work, 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 but we get no reaper. We don't, we don't, we don't benefit off of what we work in. Right or wrong? Do you have a job? Not yet, but you're struggling, ain't you? We all go through that. That's a that's a thing when you're a black, Hispanic, or a Native American. We are the Israelites that the Bible is speaking of. And this is why we're addressing you guys. And I'm going to tie it into you, my sister. Check this out. Read on. Neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. A trembling heart, which is a wavering of the mind. Read. And failing of eyes. And failing of eyes. What does failing of eyes mean? Ain't you tired of seeing your situation that we live in here in Boston? Ain't you tired of seeing the situation in Chicago? Ain't you tired of seeing the LA stuff that's going on? Whether it's Texas. Wherever it is, we're going through the same thing. Ain't your eyes tired of that? Ain't you tired of seeing your people being on the bottom? Have you ever asked yourself, why is that? Why are we going through this? This is what we're trying to bring out. But you know what the problem is with our people? Unless, if I was a white man standing up here with a suit and tie, we would have a crowd that was from here all the way up the street. But when you see your own brother, you just say in your mind, oh, he's just another nigga. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Why? Because he's not spewing what the normal people, what the white man spewed. You understand what I'm saying? Finish that scripture. And sorrow of mind. And we have a sorrow of mind. Sorrow of mind. Some of us wake up in the morning and the first thing we do when we open our eyes is we take a big sigh. <sighs> Read on. Verse 66. Uh-huh. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Read that again. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Didn't Tupac Shakur make songs about this very same thing? Didn't he say, if I die tonight, I wonder if heaven got a ghetto? Why? Because as a black man, as a Hispanic man, Native American man here in America, we don't know if we're going to make it to the next day. We don't know if we're going to live to be 25. How old are you? Huh? 27, right? How old are you? 51. Was it there part of the time you didn't know if you was going to make it to be 21? After you hit 21, you'd be like, damn, I wonder if I can make it to be 30. After you hit 30, when you get 40, you start to wipe the sweat off your face because you're like, okay, I made it. Now what's next? Your life shall hang in doubt before you. That's what we go through as a people. Read on. And thou shalt fear day and night and shall have none assurance of thy life. And you won't have none assurance of your life. When you go to sleep at night, a lot of us, because we're not keeping God's laws, don't know if we're going to make it the next day. We so stuck in today, we don't even want to see tomorrow. It's how stressful things are. You understand what I'm saying? Those are parts of the curses. Let's see another curse, then I'm going to get something in, and we're going to tie it into the whole nation. That's the men and the women. Give me verse 68. Verse 68. Uh-huh. And the Lord shall bring me into Egypt again. Stop. The original name of the land of Egypt over there in North Africa is called Mitzrayim. So where did the name Egypt come from? It was named Egypt by the so-called white man. Egypt is a Greek word. And it comes from the word Egyptos, which means bondage or slavery. Don't take my word for it. Let's see what the Bible says. Read. Again with ships. Read. Give me, the, give me Egypt. Because the way the Bible is to be taught is precept must be upon precept. Meaning you can't just take one certain thing and then go with it. You have to, it has to line up all through the scriptures to get the true understanding. The churches, they're not teaching you this. The churches are not coming out, coming to the people saying, sister, get yourself together. Brother, get yourself together. They keep teaching, come as you are. We're going to deal with that. Read on. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 2. Read. Yeah. I am the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Stop. Have brought the, us, the 12 tribes of Israel, out of the land of Egypt. When was we in the land of Egypt? When we were in captivity and slavery under uh, the pharaohs. That's the story of Moses in the Bible. Guess what? That was those were your ancestors. 
That's the history before slavery that they don't teach you about. We always call on ourselves kings and queens and princesses, but we don't have no substance or substantial to, to base that thought upon. We feel it in our heart. We feel it in, we know it in our mind, but you don't have no proof. You running around telling them, I'm a king, I'm a queen. How? How are you a king and how are you a queen? You're not totally wrong, but what basis are you standing on? The Bible is our basis. The Bible is our proof that we are kings and queens and princesses. Excuse me, kings and princesses. All right, read on. Out of the house of bondage. What does Egypt mean? Out of the house of bondage. Now that we have that understanding, let's go back to that scripture in Deuteronomy 28, 68, and see what God was saying to us. Read it from the top. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. So this is a future prophecy Moses is saying. If you keep my laws, if you don't keep God's laws, his statutes, his commandments, the things that he's telling us to do, to learn, to get away, to be productive people, this is going to happen to you. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So I'm going to bring you into bondage again. Read. With ships. How was we going to go into bondage? With ships. No, no, in cars. With ship or planes. Ships. What kind of ships are those? Cargo slave ships. That's how we were going to bondage. Your ancestors got to Barbados on ships. of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.